Look at even folks from Love the Bluebird Cafe, and we're going to take a little bit and swap some tunes. Unlike a lot of the other people we've met here in Nashville, Malcolm doesn't spend a lot of time um, or thought into selling himself and pushing himself as a songwriter. He is just completely immersed in, in his music. Unleash my the way from the belly Cry my arms far, far from the rainbow Spit and I the Swiss chocolate camera Even though Malcolm doesn't spend a lot of time selling himself, the industry seems to have found him and now he's got a major record deal. For those of you that don't know the Malcolm story, Malcolm has had uh, several setbacks along his career path. Among industry executives, there's been a growing interest in Malcolm Holcomb's career because he has a major record deal. Jimmy Miller, his manager, has been reaching out to the industry to try and help him deal with some of Malcolm's problems. Malcolm has substance abuse problems, um, has had them for a while, has battled with them, has been on the, on the wagon and off the wagon more times than I can count. Well, okay. kind of a twang. Sucks, man. Told you he's a pig, but man, I mean, it's good enough for writing. Hey, uh, uh, hey, man. Open mind. He's a frustrating guy to be with. He's a frustrating guy to deal with. The one thing and the one thing only that makes it worthwhile is the music. It is art. Burning star in Queen City. Flapping my wrist, my jaw. Every lie that I told. Every lie that I heard. Can't stop me from loving you. No, they can't stop. So you think that his condition is necessary to his talent? Well, that's kind, yeah, of, that's, that's, that's kind of a given. That's, you know? well, nah, that's an interesting question. When he worked on this, and this is, is as I mentioned, is a representative of like 130, 120 something songs that Don Toll recorded on him. He was stone cold sober. Sober's a judge. No, no. Cough it up, man. You got your per diem, you got your expense count. Me and Jordan need a beer. Coming up, folks. The red light's not on. It's ready to get this test. How's it going? Good, how are you? The other day, Gene picked me up to go along on a co-writing session with a guy named Peter McCann. Peter's a very well-known songwriter here, as well as a good friend of Gene's. I, I, I look at him as my mentor, and not only that, he's a wealth of informa information on publishing. Because mm -hmm. Peter has a publishing deal with EMI and has written a lot of songs. Co-writing is a very big deal here in Nashville. That's when two or more songwriters get together and collaborate on a piece. Gene already basically had a song written, but there were a number of points in it that he really felt he needed help with. I don't know if I'll ever love again. What's the next lyric? Trying to live my life. What is it? Try to live my life. It's, it's the same phrasing as not a day goes by, okay. right? It's right? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's power. And then I got this real cool thing I'll show you. Bubble okay. wizardry. So I don't know. Okay, so it won't be on the beat. No. Let's go put this on the, get the lyric on the computer. 
Gene does not have a publishing deal, but Peter does. So now Peter can take this song to his own company, and it really has a good chance of being pitched to a number of different artists. Let me have a lyric now. I don't know if I'll ever love. Okay, that's going too fast for me now. <laughs> How depressed were you when you wrote this? Oh, God. It's probably the last <laughs> song that I'll write about my divorce. When did you get divorced? About two years ago today, yeah, I wasn't going. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to write this song because I was. I'd written enough songs about that fiasco, and I was like, "You got to get over it. You got to quit writing songs about it." It's been a wealth of songwriting, you know. But, but then again, then again, I started singing it, and I was like, "You got to write this song because this is beautiful, you know." But it's just no good without you. Hey, writing these are. This is a healing process. These are good to write these songs. I'm a lot better off now. Maybe this was in so so I don't know if I'll ever trust again, and that's it. Simple, sweet. Give us a million dollars, and me and Pete will retire. Hi, darling. It's interesting the way the publishing companies work because even though people like Andy are, are hired to continuously write songs for the same people, they still have to pitch them to the company and basically ask permission to demo the songs. All the songs that Andy writes right now belong to Major Bob. That's her publishing company. So whatever she writes now, she turns into them. Uh, I, I, never, I don't like this song. I mean, I just think it's so cliche-ish. Oh, yeah, okay. Is that, I'll, leave it to, I'll defer to Shannon. I don't think that's the one. I mean, I think you could come up with something stronger. You know, if they don't like this one, I'll write another one. If they don't like that one, I'll write another one. If they still don't like that one, then I'm in the wrong place. Wherever you go, no matter how far, baby, I'll be your shelter in the pouring rain. Call my name, and baby, I'll be there for you. I like it though, Andy. Cool. I would want to demo like the country version. Okay. This is music business, you know, and it's like, if it's coming from your heart, that's great, that's art, but are you going to make money? I'm here not only for my art, but to have a creative channel in which to make a living. There's been a lot of interest in Andy's songs lately, so she goes regularly to her song plugger to see if any of her songs are actually going to be recorded. I'd say we've, he's gotten me between five and eight holds altogether, and uh, it makes for a very good year. Nothing's gotten cut yet, though, but we keep hoping. In Nashville, there's a system where artists and record labels can put songs on hold. That gives them first rights if they want to record it. There's this whole new wave of new-sounding girl music, chick right. music. Chick How do you want to call it? <laughs> the new country. That's right. But they're taking more chances with stuff. I can take it from here, from Pam Tillis. Okay. But I'd like to get to Patty Loveless. I think it's more perfect Patty Loveless song. Really? Oh, totally, yeah. And these are all the songs that we have right now that are on hold and that check marks are things that have already been cut this year. So we've been we've been doing okay, so you're you're in good hands. If you ever happen to run into Pam Tillis or somebody like that and you can say, Hey Pam, you know, you got that song of ours that you really like and just Actually I'll tell you what's funny is I don't run into Pam ever because you know, where am I? I'm at the Bluebird, but I run yeah. into Pam's husband, Bob DePiro. Oh, yeah. So I always say, Bob, you know, there's this great song. There you go, because I bet you she plays them for him. Well, I'll keep my fingers so crossed. So we keep our fingers crossed at that point and use this. Here, borrow this. Uh oh, okay, let's, let's <laughs> see. This, what this will decide Ready? for you. Okay, here we go. <laughs> will Pam Tillis record? I can, I can take, take it from here. here. I know I'm going to get that. Outlook good. Oh, very good. All right. Well, keep See, I'm not going to lose my record deal because they're going to catch me drunk. <laughs> I have come to the point, and Malcolm knows this, that when he's drunk, I won't work with him. It doesn't breach our relationship. It doesn't put an end to, yes, I'm representing Malcolm Holcomb. Go ahead and hock his camera for dope. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him just sitting there on the couch, just having a blast, and then turning to whomever he's with and say, look, man, I'm just going to walk down the store right quick. You want anything? And then he's gone for two weeks. Renee, this is Jimmy Miller. How are you? No, I'm, you're probably not too interested in talking to 
me and Malcolm right now, or at least Malcolm, or me about Malcolm. Jimmy's reached the end of his rope in trying to figure out a way to help Malcolm. And as a last resort, he decided to call Malcolm's estranged wife, Renee. I've arranged for him to get treatment. Um, it's a 30-day program. I'm just kind of racking my brain to find ways to get him ready for it. He is the best in, you know, mentally, spiritually, et cetera, and so on. After either when he's looking forward to going home to see little Malcolm and you and, and Anna, or when he's uh, just come back from that. You know, I think that's the one thing that he's searching for so bad right now is that sense of home, that sense of family. Okay. God love you, Renee. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Ugh. Oh, man, she's just in tears. Really? Ugh. Oh. Malcolm's ongoing drinking binge is starting to put a serious strain on his relationship with Jimmy. You're drunk! Mother You are drunk! Others are finding ways to survive as they wait for the music industry to notice them. I do interest your dreams In long life setting in